Coach, congratulations on your victory today. If you could just give us a, a quick uh, opening statement. Yeah, heck of a game. Um, two really, really good teams. Um, have a lot of respect for Brian O'Connor and Virginia. Uh, they've been so good for so long. Uh, it's a testament to him and his coaches and obviously the players. We've had so many battles against them, so I wasn't surprised that we had another one. Um, I was really excited for our players when I looked up there and saw all of our fans that have traveled, um, our chancellors out here, some of our biggest alumni, uh, you know, some of the former players, a ton of former players, um, our athletic director, uh, Coach Fox was here, which obviously really special to me and uh, people that have really given a ton to our program, you know, got out here to support these guys. Um, and then, you know, I thought the first inning, the story of the game was the strikeout against Didowick. I think if they score right there or have a big inning, it's going to be tough in this ballpark. But our pitching did the same thing they've been doing. They kept us in striking distance. Uh, we, we played good defense. We made plays. And then, you know, Jackson Vandenbreek. I mean, he's one of our captains. There's a reason this team is like it is. There's a, there's a kid, all ACC last year, hasn't gone like he wanted it to, and then he steps up there in that big moment, hits a double, and then uh, obviously these guys, they've come through all year, and Vance got the big big hit and a, a, a big-time team win for us. Great. Thank you very much. If you uh, please raise your hand, we'll start with the first question right here, the first two right here. Uh, Michael Code, WCHL, com. Vance, can you just take me through uh, your mindset in that final at-bat? Yeah. Um, Coach Weir's had a really good approach for us. <clears throat> and, you know, I just wanted to just go at it slow, um, just try to slow myself down. And, you know, I got a good pitch 2-0 and kind of came out of it, and I got the same pitch 2-1 and stayed down. Question over here. Adam Smith with Inside Carolina. Yeah, Casey... What was your view of uh, of the last at bat for Vance there, and and just the outcome of it, and and knowing how he sort of has, you know, the knack for delivering in these type of moments? Like, what did you see when you were out there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you shouldn't feel like he's going to come through every time, but that's that's how I felt. So it, that's just been how it's going recently. And uh, I mean, the second you know Kobe popped up and Vance was stepping on the plate, it, you know, I think everyone in the dugout knew he's going to come through, and uh, that's what happened. Good question right here, front. Uh, for, for Casey and Vince, can you talk about Jackson coming through and he hasn't had had that bat in like 24 days or something and to come through like that in that spot? I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a great teammate. He's all, all we can ask for. He's, he's there for us. He's cheering us on when we're, when we're out there playing. So, you know, it, it makes us extremely happy to see him come through. And um, I mean, you don't want it for anyone else other than Jackson. Uh, he's our captain. And, um, we love it for him, and uh, we have full confidence in him. So um, that's it, it's great to see out of him. Right here. Grace Nugent, Inside Carolina. Casey, you seem to have not really found a postseason rhythm, and that changed this afternoon. Have you made any adjustments at the plate or mentally? No, n honestly, honestly, not really. Um, it's uh, I'm just thinking my bats weren't weren't terrible the last two weeks. Balls just weren't falling. Um, the R RBIs weren't coming. I just stick to what I was doing all year, and uh, luckily today it started. Balls started falling and um, started driving. I guess a run in. Okay, two more questions for the players to go back there in front. Matt Talbany with World Baseball Network. Vance, what's it like to have like guys like Jackson and Alex and be such catalysts in late innings? I mean, even Alex laying down that sacrifice bunt. What's it just like to? You know, bring that momentum, and then you know you finishing the game there. Yeah, it's huge. Um, you know, we have the utmost confidence in all of our guys, and you know, I don't think the moment is too big for anybody. You know, Coach Ford's preaches every single day to just kind of stay with the process, and I think that's what we're doing. You know, day in, day out. Okay, last question. Student athletes, right here. Mark Garland, College Baseball Central. Dalton, heck of an outing. Can you tell us a little bit about what was working for you out there, and did you get a chance to talk to Jason about how his outing was working? Uh, I didn't really have a chance to talk to Jason because I was in the bullpen, but um, just kind of talking with Coach Hal out there and just kind of seeing what was going on, um, watching the pitches before me, watching posts and go through his, um, just commanding the strike zone, really, um, letting my stuff work from inside the strike zone to out of it, um, and just attacking them. So that's really what I had going for me. Okay. okay. Anywhere? Um, Gentlemen, thank you very much. Sweet. Excuse. That post in, boy.
Well, we'll open questions for Coach. We'll start first two questions down here. Then, Scott, I know uh, in the past when you're pinch hitting, normally you'll go to Johnny like you did against uh, LSU on in Game Seven. What was it about the matchup that made you go with Vandy this time? Was it just the the pitcher? That was one thing. Um, a couple things go into stuff like that. Vandy's been really good um, MVP, really good in live at bats, uh, and Johnny's been good too. But you know, I asked Coach Weirs after Alberto's second at bat, "Hey, if we ha- if we need to pitch hit for La- Alberto, um, you know, what do you think?" And he said, "I feel really good about Vandy. Um, the thing about Vandy is he's not an all or nothing guy. Even though he doesn't have a high batting average, he still looked at the ball. He's walked. Um, he's got some savvy about him. He can get a bunt down. He can run. Uh, so we just felt like, hey, we just this park's hard to hit a home run." Um, we felt like we needed that spark, and we and and Coach Weirs again. He's these guys spent a lot of time on prep, and he really felt good ab- about the matchup against Hungate. Okay, we'll go one, two, three, four. Can you reflect on some, some of these games have been coming down to the last that bad? Uh, how's your heart rate the last few games, and is this something that you've kind of come to expect? Well, I probably should ease up on the Red Bulls, I guess, but. <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, you almost kind of expect it with this team, but we're, we're playing really good teams. And I was talking to the team about, you know, how much I've preached because everybody gets caught up in the power of the offense, scoring runs, the home run. We got a ton of home runs. We broke a record. But you can't win if you don't pitch and you don't defend. Just those fundamental things that we work on every single day. And then when you get in a big ballpark like this, if you're expecting to hit a ton of home runs, it's just it's just not easy to do. Uh, but the funniest part of the day was at the end of the game when Parks Harbor was talking to me and Coach Weir's Bicky, and he's like, I mean, how, how do you guys – how do you make it through the game? Like, I don't even know if I'm going to live to be 50. I think my heart's going to just fail. <laughs> so, you know, I can relate to what Parks Harbor feels like. I can tell you that. Hey, we'll right here. Jake McKeever, College Baseball Central. Coach, it seems like Vance has almost kind of perfected these Ofer walk-ups. What is he – what's kind of the secret sauce that he was able to flush those? You know, I felt like if you look at the box score, and I just told our team, we're going to find some grass here. Like, we're going to get a couple knocks. Uh, Blanco's really good, but he only struck us out four times. Three of those, you know, Alberto, who just had a tough night, and one against Cook. I thought we were having some pretty good at-bats. Just stay with it. And I felt like Vance was seeing it well. Um, You know, it didn't look like he was just getting beat by fastballs. But, you know, he's also – He's shown in his career that he enjoys the big moment. You know, he invites the big moment. Um, so I'm just hoping we can get more guys on base for him because when guys are on base for him and Casey Cook and Parks Harbor, you know, they do it. They've, they've driven in runs for us all year. Brendan Lunga, Daily Tar Heel. Coach O'Connor said that you know they couldn't, they didn't consider walking fans in that spot because Casey was on deck. How much of a luxury is it to have that one-two punch at the top of the lineup? Or, you know, you can't even consider walking Vance in a spot like that. Yeah, I mean, really, I know I know D'Onofrio didn't have a great night tonight, but Gavin, man, he has some good at bat. So it's really that one, two, three right at the top. Um, power, uh, the, le- the left-handed hitter, Casey, is sandwiched in between those two powerful right-handed hitters that also drive runs in. Uh, so it's a big-time luxury because you have a tough decision to make. Um, and I, I would have done the same thing. You know, that's – you got – I mean, Casey Cook's over 80 RBIs, and he's got a knack. He's got the biggest knack for driving in runs on our team. So uh, it's a good feeling when I'm coaching third base because I'm always trying to get to the, back to the top of the order. Okay, we have a question in the back, and then we have a question over here and down here. Hi, Coach Forbes. Peter Burnett, Daily Nonpareil here in Council Bluffs. You mentioned the strikeout in the first inning as being kind of the story of the game. Uh, in the third inning as well, I think they had runners on second and third and only got a run out of it. Uh, in terms of his composure, what did you see from Jason and his ability to get those big outs in key moments? I mean, that's why he's so impressive. Um, he's just not overwhelmed with any moment. He's shown that. And he was when I walked out there to take him out, he was trying his best to tell me that he wasn't coming out. Um, and that's what I like. You know, that's, that's, that's how it's supposed to be. Uh, but, man, he is so competitive. Um, and he has – he's one of those guys – 
you know, Alex White was. They remind me a lot of each other. Each other. He, when he, when he gets in some trouble, he can reach back a little bit. He can he can reach back and get that fastball. That's a really good hitter that he struck out right there in that big situation when he knew a fastball was coming because you know his command wasn't where it needed to be yet with the off speed. Um, he's just mature beyond his years, and uh, we're lucky that that he's wearing our uniform. I can tell you that. Okay, we go with the question right there. Scott, does the effort from Dalton almost get lost a little bit with the heroics of Vance and everything? But, I mean, three and a third out of the bullpen, and, you know, it was obviously stuff that you needed. I mean, what, what did you think about his performance? You know, Matt Poston and uh, Poston got some big outs too, but and Dalton Pence, they get a lot of fly balls, um, and that can be a good thing in this park. You know, we lost UCLA in 2013, and they just – we could a lot of fly balls, and they, they die here a lot of times. Um, but Dalton was Dalton. Uh, he's been our horse – uh, the whole season. And, you know, the the thing I like the most looking at this bot score is he only threw 29 pitches. So that horse is going to be back out there most likely on Sunday night. One more question for Coach Ray here. Scott, are you going to stay personally and watch Tennessee, Florida State later? Or is that going to be delegated to one of your assistants just to scout who you might get? You know, now with so much video – um, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't delegate that with these guys. I trust them. I don't. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care if they're going to the drover and staying to midnight. Where's big coach? Where's Bicky? Coach Gaines and Coach Howell will be have our guys prepared and they'll have a great plan. Me personally, I love coming back to the ballpark. I'll check with my family, see what they're doing. Um, but I love it. I, I don't take it for granted. You know, this is a special place. I remember the first time driving up that hill. At the old stadium, just being like, I can't believe this is happening. You know, it's, it's like it's basically how I feel when I come up here as a head coach. It's like, is this even real? So I'll probably go back and sit down and give me maybe two dozen of those mini donuts and enjoy a ball game. Coach yeah, if he's back here, I'll chat with whoever wants to chat. Hey, Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.